Hello everybody, my name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another YouTube video on PowerShell. This is video number three, so we're going to be diving into some profiles for PowerShell, execution policies, and that kind of cool stuff. So let's get started. I'm going to fire up PowerShell. I'll just type it into my kind of Windows search bar start menu thing here, and here we go. We're at our prompt. So what I wanted to talk about in this video is how PowerShell is set up or really how it gets to its default state, what it loads, what it does to really get into this command prompt here that we're sitting at just now. So the way I'm going to do that is by showing you the PowerShell profiles. So PowerShell profiles are kind of the commandlets, things, functions, scripts that are ran uh, right when PowerShell starts up, when it presents itself to you as this beautiful blue box that we're working with. Where the profiles are stored on your system can vary, but they're normally at some default locations. They are scripts, a PowerShell.ps1 file, and that's a collection of commandlets or functions or things that can run and execute code, all within the context of PowerShell, right? They're PowerShell scripts. So where these are stored is actually something that's available to you and accessible by noting the profile variable. I haven't talked about variables just yet in the series, and we'll certainly, certainly get into them more very, very soon, but really variables will just store some value or some information that you can recall and work with and use later. You can change them as needed, etc. So the variables are denoted in PowerShell with a dollar sign prefix. So if I wanted to check out the profile variable, I'm just going to type in dollar sign profile, and again, PowerShell is case insensitive. It doesn't care. It doesn't care whether I use a capital P or not. But that will let us see what the profile is currently set to. We could echo this out, or again, the alias echo kind of refers to write host. But because we're in a kind of an interactive prompt here, PowerShell is pretty in interpreter-like in that we can just enter this and see its value right away. So. My profile is stored in users, John H, documents, Windows, PowerShell, Microsoft, PowerShell profile .ps1. That .ps1 extension is important because that tells us, hey, this is a PowerShell script. So we could go ahead and look at that. We could, we could fire it up in Notepad. We could cat it out. Let's do Notepad dollar sign profile. And it errors at me and tells me the system cannot find the path specified. So, okay. Maybe it's, it doesn't exist yet. Why can't we open it? Let's table that problem because we're going to get back to it. But first, I want to show you that this profile is only relative to me, my user, John H. What about all the other users that might be on this computer? Or what about are there profiles that are system-wide across the entire machine? And that is exactly the case, and I want to show you what else you can use to see where these profiles are being stored. This is another trick. If you check out the profile variable, we can use select object as a command here with our pipeline, that vertical symbol again, the bar here. We can select object asterisk to get all of them, and it tells us there are actually other locations for different kind of scopes of our profile. Our current user, current host, for this machine is at that location we just saw, profile from John H. Documents. There is one current user, all hosts, and all hosts I'm assuming is if, okay, we have kind of a domain and network thing that's set up, and if my account is going around to different locations, that's really the scope that we're looking at. We have all users current hosts, so that's system-wide for this machine. That's in Windows System 32, a PowerShell folder, and a profile there, and all users, all hosts. So we could examine or set each of those as needed. If you wanted to make things system-wide, you could modify that all users current host. But for our cases, we'll just stick with the quick and easy profile default here, current user, current host. So we zoom in on my user, John H. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and actually kind of create that profile, see what it does, how we can work with it, etc. But when we tried to work with it, when we tried to notepad, that wouldn't show it to us. We could use get content, and that errors out. Cannot find that path because it doesn't exist. So normally, like notepad, if you were to try and do something like create a new file along the way, notepad would straight up tell you, hey, this doesn't exist yet, but do you want to create it? 
and you could do that with a notepad or, or get content get content won't do that it'll tell you it doesn't exist but notepad as we fired that up just to kind of cue us in the problem is that this whole path doesn't exist this documents windows powershell folder isn't real so i realized in the last video i neglected to show you how to make directories within powershell so interesting thing right we could check out the alias to that maker command that we might be used to in Linux, but it says, hey, that's not real. That's not a thing. Can't find a matching alias because an alias with the name maker does not exist. So I try to Google, I try to research like, man, how the heck do we create a directory or just a simple folder within PowerShell? It is, of course, that new item that we're used to, but we actually need to specify an item type. And we can specify, oh, that's a directory for us, and we'll just create it right here as a simple test here. That will create a new directory for us. You can see the mode there, the D for directory, and that has been created. We could change directory into that as needed, and we could work with it. It's an empty directory right now. That's fine. You don't really need to see that directory. What I wanted you to see was that PowerShell purist syntax for creating a directory. As it turns out, there is an alias for that. MD, MD will seemingly allow us to use MKDIR or MakeDir. So along that notion, you can just type MakeDir and that will create a directory for you. But apparently it's not noted as an alias. So maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not smart. I want to hear your feedback. What am I missing at the how we're able to run that? Is, a, is it a built-in? I don't know. Let's go ahead and remove those directories um, because I don't need those whatsoever. <laughs> and it won't let me do multiple. That's lame. I'm learning. We're all learning. Okay, now we know that we can create a directory for our profile. So let's just grab all the way up to that file here. I'm going to just select this and right click to copy. And then we can make directory that or that new item style that you might like, and that will create that directory needed for us. Documents already existed. Windows PowerShell was the one that didn't exist yet, but now we can go ahead and create our profile. So let's do that in Notepad. I will go ahead and paste that in so we can edit that file. And now Notepad says to us, hey, this file doesn't exist yet. Do you want to create it? Let's do it. Now we've got this. That dot ps1 file a script and let's just type in a simple command like get date or we could write host hey you logged in whatever you want it's it's up to you what your profile does it's kind of like the bash rc file or the bash profile that will load up when you run bash in your linux shell or your Z shell or K shell. You see an RC file, and these are the commands, things that happen when you have gone ahead and actually started that command prompt. This is helpful, normally in the case of if we are getting new modules or some plugins or extensions to PowerShell, like, oh, we wanted to go ahead and import module Git or some more color for our output. Maybe we could grab those modules and then right away, we don't have to load them by hand whenever we start PowerShell. They'll be included in our profile and PowerShell will do that automatically for us. So now that I've created that, I've created this little profile for us and we've created the content, all it does is run the get date commandlet. Once we start up PowerShell, we should see that in action. We can see that actually go ahead and get started for us. So let's do it. I'm going to create a new PowerShell window. It'll load up for us, but it spit up. We've got blood on our screen again. It says, this profile cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. For more information, see about execution policies, and you can check it out online. But what gives, right? Our, power, our profile isn't loading. This is because something that PowerShell brought into play called execution policies. And this is a wonderful segue. This is kind of the transition that I wanted here, right? We're trying to execute our profile. It's a PowerShell script. We're going to get into more PowerShell scripting soon. But we need to be able to actually run them. We need to be able to see that code actually execute. So it says, check out about execution policies. Maybe we can get help on that if I paste it in right here. Searching help for about execution policies. 
and this errors too. Well, I guess I never formally introduced this to us, and that's my bad. Um, if you wanted to get more help on your machine, more documentation, you can run update help. Let's go ahead and update help. See if that will work for us in this PowerShell learning curve. Grabbing all this stuff. There's a lot here. Might have to pause the video for this. <laughs> okay, that failed too. Well, looks like, scrolling through these error messages, we can't pull these in because we aren't running as the administrator. Do you remember how we can fire up PowerShell as the administrator? We could just simply right-click it or Shift-Control-Enter. Now let's go ahead and update help. You can see it tried to run our profile, but we still can't do that because we don't have the execution policy set. But what are our execution policies? We want to be able to learn about that. So let's go ahead and download this help. Okay, that actually took a couple minutes, and we still have a couple errors, but let's see if we can even check out that about execution policy that we wanted to see. It was a uh, get help on about execution policies, and these were underscores that were separating them. Execution policies. Okay, so now we have some more information. Let's scroll up to check out what we have here. Okay, so execution policies describes the Windows PowerShell execution policies, whatever, and explains how to manage them. That's what this about help file does for us. So execution policies let you determine the conditions under which Windows PowerShell loads configuration files and runs scripts. You can set an execution policy for the local computer, the current user, or a particular session. Okay, so we can zoom in on the scope, really just like how we did with the profiles. It says, the PowerShell execution policies are as follows. Restricted is the default policy. It will permit individual commands, but it will not run scripts. Prevents running all scripts, including formatting, modules, etc. All signed means scripts can run. Excuse me, scripts can run, but all the scripts must be signed by a trusted publisher, including scripts that you write on the local computer. So even if we were to develop some code, we would have to sign it with our digital key and known that we are a trusted individual. It will prompt you before running scripts from publishers that you have not yet classified as trusted or untrusted, and it risks running signed but malicious scripts. So even if it's signed, there's no way of knowing it's actually good or bad. Remote signed says scripts can run. This is the default extension policy in Windows Server 2012, requires a digital signature from trusted publishers including ones that are downloaded from the internet, email, and some messaging, does not require digital signatures on scripts that you have written on your local computer. Run scripts that are downloaded from the internet and are not signed if the scripts are unblocked, such as by using the unblock file command. Okay, that's good to know. There's a risk in running these scripts if you get them from the internet because they could be evil. Unrestricted means unsigned scripts can run. That, of course, has the most risk. It warns the user before running scripts. That's a nice typo. Nice. That's hilarious. Configuration files that are downloaded from the internet. Can someone tell Microsoft there's a typo and they're about help? <laughs> Bypass means nothing is blocked and there's no warnings whatsoever. Okay, we might be able to use that for evil. Some malicious stuff in the future if we're trying to do some red teaming. Offensive security, right? Undefined means that there's nothing actually set. Okay. You can set an execution policy in a particular scope. Okay, that's for specific processes or users of the entire machine. For more information, you can set the execution policy. That's the commandlet there. Or you can get the execution policy with get execution policy. If to get all of the execution policies that are affected, you can use get execution policy hyphen list. Okay. Let's go ahead and play with that then. Let's see what we're actually working with. Let's get execution policy hyphen list. And seemingly everything is undefined. Okay. What about just regular get execution policy? That tells me restricted. So that means that no scripts can run. But we can set execution policy and we can use that as remote signed. I think that's the best option.
because that still adds security in that we can download scripts on the internet. We won't be able to run them unless we specifically unblock them. And any scripts that we develop right on our own computer, we can use just fine. So let's do that. It says, do you want to do this for real? Are you sure? Uh, yes. Capital Y there, hit that, and now we're good. Let's get our execution policy one more time, just as a simple sanity check. Make sure that change did, in fact, take place, and it is now remote signed. Okay, I can only do that, we can only run that command set execution policy if we're running as the administrator. You can see up on the top left, that's how I am running the shell. When I hit control shift, I uh, enter and fired up the PowerShell prompt that way. If we were to run as a regular user, it would yell at us. So if you got some blood, got some red on your screen, make sure that you are in fact running that as the administrator user. So now we could potentially run scripts. So now if I close that PowerShell, run a new window here. It's going to execute our script. It's going to actually execute our profile, that .ps1 file that we created, and it's going to see that get date commandlet output is right there. So, great. That is our profile. Let's go ahead and remove that. I wanted to show that to you, but and I wanted to use that as a segue so we can actually set our execution policy. And now we've done everything that I wanted to accomplish in this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please do like, comment, and subscribe, all those YouTube algorithm things. There is a link in the description to join the Discord server. It is an awesome community with tons of smart people, much smarter than me, and we're all trying to get better. We're all trying to learn the cybersecurity and computer science stuff. So uh, hope you enjoyed. Love to see you guys on Patreon. Love to see you on PayPal. Love to see you in the next video. Thanks.